Now is a very exciting time to get involved with the University of Nebraska Extension's on-farm research. Through the use of a $1.2 million USDA grant, corn and wheat growers from Omaha to the Panhandle could soon have an opportunity to gain first-hand experience with cutting-edge technologies. It could allow them to more precisely identify the amount of nitrogen fertilizer their crops need while keeping excess nitrates from ending up in the state's water supply. Market Journal's Bill Dodd has the story. Well, thanks, Troy. You know, one thing I catch myself saying quite frequently is, the future is now. With new tech hitting the market on what seems like a daily basis, there's always some competitive edge to be gained by employing new practices or new technologies. Now, this grant, which was awarded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Natural Resource Conservation Service, could give several corn and wheat producers across the Cornhusker State a one-of-a-kind opportunity to improve their farm's management as well as land stewardship. This particular grant is primarily geared toward on-farm research trials, and the focus of this particular trial is nitrogen management and leveraging new ag technologies that are available in order to accomplish that outcome. Nebraska Extension educator Laura Thompson joined me and gave me a quick synopsis of the types of technologies producers can expect to work with throughout the trial. For producers, I think it'll really give them an opportunity to get some experience with some different technologies that could help improve their nitrogen management, things like uh, crop canopy sensors, aerial imagery, different models that have come out, some things that could help them more precisely manage their nitrogen potentially, as well as giving them the opportunity to try some different production systems. So maybe moving some of their nitrogen application to in season rather than all prior to uh, planting. So some opportunity to try some different timings with their nitrogen that can be more efficient, as well as uh, trying some things like maybe variable rating their nitrogen. So maybe applying different amounts in different parts of the field that need more or less nitrogen. So really a good opportunity for them to get hands-on experience, trying out some new technologies, trying out some things that maybe they uh, wouldn't necessarily have had the opportunity to get their hands on and see how they work in their um, own farm operations. Uh, for us as a research and extension team, this is really a great opportunity for us to help um, them get that experience with the technology as well as try to refine some of these technologies, um, see where they're going to fit better, uh, maybe certain soils or certain practices uh, or crop production systems they might fit better with. Um, so really a great opportunity to, to see these in a lot of different environments as well. And when it comes to new tech in the aerial imagery arena, this grant utilizes the cream of the crop. Long gone are the days of relying on the old eyeball test. With the nearly limitless potential of modern aerospace innovation, collecting field data has never been so precise or so much fun to collect. Yeah, so within the aerial imagery, there's, there's some different options that producers might look at, uh, anywhere from a drone with maybe a multispectral sensor on it to an airplane or to satellite imagery. Could all be um, something they could look at. Using that to monitor the crop's progress, um, have some area of the field that has a higher nitrogen area that we can use as a reference or a lower nitrogen area to alert us to upcoming crop nitrogen need and then using that imagery to direct spatially variable nitrogen recommendations. One factor of the trial is researchers would ideally like to collect data while applying nitrogen in season. Laura says this method of practice and ensuing data collection could potentially yield information that could lead to more precise field predictions and management practices. Yeah, so one of our goals with, the in, with nitrogen management, if we go to in-season nitrogen management, we have a lot of opportunity to refine our management based on what's happening during the growing season. So we can use things like what weather has already occurred up to that point where we'd make the in-season application. Uh, we can use modeling to predict what might happen. Um, we can use the crop canopy sensors to see what's going on. And all that can help drive the nitrogen application that's being made in season. So we get a lot more information when we can move to that in season application, um, start incorporating data that helps us see what's actually happened that specific year and in different portions of the field to really make a more precise management of nitrogen. Not only will producers have the benefit of using cutting edge technology, but with real time data being regularly gathered by researchers, Research participants will also have the benefit of knowing when and where to apply nitrogen, and more importantly, when and where not to apply nitrogen, potentially creating an economic and environmental benefits. Yeah, so there, there's potential that it could um, save nitrogen application um, by reducing nitrogen applications in areas of the field that it's not needed, 
or just uh, reducing excess nitrogen application that maybe is occurring. Um, so there's potential for an economic benefit um, as well as an environmental benefit, which is really important um, by reducing the amount of nitrogen that could be lost to the environment through things like leaching. And then, like I said earlier, the future is now. So if you're interested in becoming involved in this particular research, there is one stipulation. In order to be qualified for this trial, participants must be EQUIP or Environmental Quality Incentives Program eligible. Now for more information, you can visit cropwatch.unl.edu. And while you're there, you can also find out about some upcoming farm research result meetings. Upcoming meetings include a February 26th meeting in Kearney at the Buffalo County Extension Office, February 27th in Alliance at Knight Museum and Sandhill Center, and February 28th in York at the Holtus Convention Center with a special focus on cover crops and soil health. So Troy, that's what I've got my eye on this week. I'll send it back to you. <laughs>